I'm Dr. Payne. And I'm Kirk Lyons, and this is All Things Confederate. Well, Kirk, what's happening this week in well, SLRC? We have a, a special event that's going to be taking place, place next Tuesday. That will be October the 2nd. Mm -hmm. uh, Father Alistair Anderson and his wife Anne are coming to Black Mountain, and they're going to uh, um, be staying as guests here in, in town. And we have a special event down at the Old Depot in Old Fort, North Carolina, where they will... Where Father Anderson will be presented a Lifetime Achievement Award from the That's Southern Eagle Resource Center. And if y'all have not met uh, Father Alistair Anderson, uh, you should meet him. He's really one of the finest men in the Confederation, and we're very excited to have him and his wife coming. It, it'll be, uh, he's, he's got quite a history. And, mm -hmm. and uh, just to give you a little background on Father Anderson, why he's deserving of such a I, I, he, he really, I don't know if there's an award that can be high enough for Father Anderson. <laughs> he is a, uh, um, Antioch and Orthodox priest, um, an Annapolis graduate, 1944. Mm -hmm. So he's a world war II veteran. He was a line officer in the South Pacific on a destroyer. Mm -hmm. Um, got out of the Navy, um, became an Episcopal priest. In 1950, he sought a chaplaincy during the Korean War, mm -hmm. and the Navy was not offering chaplaincies, apparently, and so he took an Army chaplaincy. Mm -hmm. And so he served an, as an Army chaplain for almost 30 years. Wow. Uh, did two combat tours as a regimental and brigade chaplain mm -hmm. in Vietnam. Yeah. Um, He's a warrior. He, he is. No He's, question uh, about it. He's got a, a very impressive... A uniform full of ribbons and all kinds of medals and awards. So he retired as a um, full colonel mm -hmm. in, in the army as a, as a chaplain, and, and then made a, another career as um, as a parish priest and uh, a very very staunch Confederate. Mm -hmm. um, it was Father Anderson that taunted the government at uh, Point Lookout to arrest him <laughs> when he deigned to hold a um, memorial service at their at the Point Lookout Cemetery, mm -hmm. where the Confederate flag was not allowed to fly over the graves of Confederate veterans. Uh, he has been uh, instrumental in honoring um, Major Henry Wirtz mm -hmm. uh, in Washington, D.C., and Hells a Memorial there every year. Um, he was instrumental in putting together the um, um, memorial at the Confederate Memorial in Arlington Cemetery, mm -hmm. which of course belongs to us. Right. That was Robert E. Lee's home. And there's a really beautiful Confederate memorial that was built by Moses Ezekiel uh, around the Confederate graves there. And Father Anderson has been instrumental in um, honoring uh, Confederates mm -hmm. in Arlington Cemetery. Mm -hmm. So he, he's just done so. He's been... Uh, uh, A&V chaplain, uh, National Sons of Confederate Veterans chaplain in chief, um, Maryland division chaplain. He's just been everywhere, done everything. Uh, just a stalwart Confederate, faithful friend of the Southern Legal Resource Center. Yeah. Faithful friend. He's his own Confederate hero. <laughs> he is. He is. Um, so anyway, we're very much looking forward to having Father Anderson. And if you're in the area and can come, we'd love to have you. Um, call us at 828-669-5189 for information. And uh, I, I think and we'll also post a video of the award ceremony. Yeah, that would be great. So, I um, understand there's some trouble down in uh, in Alabama? They, they always have trouble in Selma, it seems like. <laughs> um, the um, city council, I believe yesterday, and today is September 26, 2012, Yesterday, the Selma City Council voted to order the Friends of Forest to stop construction on their memorial to Nathan Bedford Forest in the cemetery. Now, they already Selma. had a memorial in the cemetery. Right? That's right. What and, happened to that? And somebody stole the bust. There was they a bust. vandalized it and stole it. And which is de grave desecration. And, and I go back even further. There used to be, there was a forest memorial at the Trotman House, which was a hospital during the war, mm -hmm. owned by the county, I believe. And the city council threw a conniption fit about that, lied, mm -hmm. backpedaled, lied some more, backpedaled some more. And because of the very, very high intensity racial politics that is being promulgated by the so-called civil rights community there in Selma, mm -hmm. uh, they had to move the bust to the cemetery. Mm -hmm. Well, the Friends of Forest didn't go away. And Pat Godwin, who's uh, president of Friends of Forest, has been a stalwart. Uh, they moved the 
bus to the um, cemetery mm -hmm. because that they had no place else to put it. And now the city and the and the are going after them there in the cemetery to move that. And apparently there has been some protests and in your face. Mm -hmm. um, Basically, vandalism, attempts at vandalism, of course, that they stole the um, the bust, and they're pretty sure they know who did it. There's mm -hmm. nobody's fessing up. And now the city council has voted that they can't even have that in the, the yeah. Confederate so, circle. Let this be a lesson to everybody who's uh, listening to, uh, to all of these uh, whiners and complainers about uh, Southern symbols and Southern monuments and take that flag and, and put it in the cemetery where they're buried and all that, you know, put the monument like they want to take the monument in Reedsville and right. put it in the cemetery. Well, we see what happens when it's put in the cemetery. You take one back step and you'll never stop stepping backwards. That's right. And uh, they have had, uh, when the workmen have been working on the monument there in the uh, cemetery, uh, they've actually had the protesters there trying to stop work mm -hmm. and, and blocking them and chanting and just being annoying gadflies. Um, part of the problem with the um, the monument is that there's a clouded issue as to who owns it. And this is a very common problem. If you have a Confederate memorial or monument in your community, find out now who owns it. Mm -hmm. Do a title search. Do what you can. Establish who the owner is, because if it belongs to the UDC or or belongs to the county, you need to know that. So when they come to remove that monument, you'll know what your legal standing is. And, what and it, to be if done. you have a, a Confederate UDC that owns it, then you're in good shape. But if you have an anti-Confederate UDC, then you can have problems like we've experienced here in North Carolina. That's correct. Um, and the problem is, is that many times there were assumptions, good old boy handshakes back in the early days. Everybody wanted the UDC or whoever to have the monument. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these documents just didn't get filed. Apparently, the problem in Selma is uh, the intent was for the city council to pass title to the Confederate circle mm -hmm. to the United Daughters of the Confederacy. Mm -hmm. No deed. Uh, Can't okay. find a deed. Now, maybe there was one, but maybe there wasn't one. Mm -hmm. Nobody back then would have questioned it. It's, mm -hmm. the, it's the UDCs. Of course, uh, and one thing that... Uh, I plan to impart to um, the Friends of Forest Attorneys, I find, once I find out who they are, is that the UDC has held hostile possession against the world mm -hmm. of this circle right. for almost a, probably over yeah. 100 years. Excuse me, at least so they have squatters, right? Yeah, they have adverse possession. Mm -hmm. Even under the squatter statutes, mm -hmm. they would have adverse possession of mm -hmm. the property because they've held it against the world and claimed ownership for over 100 years. And nobody's disputed and nobody that. disputed it. So, yeah. And, of course, it was obviously intended that that's what the city council wanted sure. to do. Now, the problem is you entrust this to a modern court, and what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. Who knows? That's right. It's, 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 one would, could almost make a, a better prediction that they would do the wrong thing than the court would do the right thing in this day Often and age. It depends on the jury pool. In that's, the right. Mm -hmm. that's right. That's right. So this is an ongoing fight. Um, it this is, is something everybody can get involved with because there are Confederate monuments everywhere. And you should appoint yourself as a committee of one to find out about this and right. then get back to us and let us know. And we need to keep, there needs to be a, a database on the ownership mm -hmm. of all of these monuments because we never know when the next one's going to happen. That's we right. need to go ahead and, 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 and the SLRC has taken upon itself to keep a database on titles, deeds, et cetera, for Confederate monuments, wherever situated, so that we'll have that. And it's a small pile, I must mm -hmm. confess. But we need this information, and it needs to be made available to people on the ground that are there where these things are, are flaring up. Yeah, so let's not wait until they have the bulldozers ready to, to knock the monument over or some uh, supposedly sleep person drive into it. Right. Um, <laughs> Uh, act now and get that information to us so we can have that database compiled and the information on hand. And become a member of the Southern Legal Resource Center. That's one good way you can help vindicate your rights as a Confederate. Join the Southern Legal Resource Center, $35 a year. Uh, chapter and camp memberships are $200. It's the best investment you're going to make today in your Confederate heritage. And uh, thank you for coming today, and we'll see you next time. Right, thank you.